Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. This is day two of the Identity Retreat. We will be going back and recapping everything. Well, some of the things that took place at the evening service on April the 2nd, 2022. This uh, video will be a compilation of videos, slides, and still photos that we're taking during the day to share with you exactly what the Holy Spirit was doing on that weekend. As a matter of fact, let's look at this intro video. We're here at Seeker Spring. Um, this is just part of where to, where we gonna eat at. I know, I know, I sounded like a little girl. We had just driven five hours uh, from Houston to Monroe, Louisiana to set up and prepare. But again, we want to thank everyone for coming and being a part of what Holy Spirit was doing on this weekend this was a powerful weekend and so now get prepared as we go into our saturday morning uh saturday evening this was at the 7 p.m service the retreat um let's go into prayer amen thank you god thank you god for your presence on tonight the ground has already been tilled in praise and the ground has already been tilled in prayer. And so we come tonight, God, for part two of what you started on last night. Yes. And we thank you for drawing us here to understand purpose, to understand identity. Mm. Yes. We just glorify you and magnify you and exalt you, God. Yeah. We pull to, we call to remembrance the word that we heard and saw demonstrated unto us on last night. We thank you for the equilateral triangle, God, where we understand the usness of you. Yes. That you are the us that said, let us create man in our image. Yes. God, thank you that you are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you that you created us as a spirit being in your image. And then you made a dirt suit for us to live in and you breathed the breath of life into us. And so we are a tripart being like you're a tripart being. Thank you, God, that you made humankind male and female. And thank you for showing us what it means to be truly feminine and truly masculine and reveal you, O oh God, in this relationship of Trinity unto each and every person that we come in contact with. And so, God, as we go forward on tonight, reveal what it is we need to see. Mm, that's it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart so I can see you. I don't just want to, but I'm going to see you. So I can see you. So God, you're opening our eyes. You're giving us spiritual eyes to see and spiritual ears to hear as you speak to us on tonight. <laughs> Here another one. <laughs> Speak to my heart, Lord, yes. and give me a holy word. If I can't hear from you, yeah. then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. Y'all keep singing. Let me tell you what alone is a problem because God said it's not good that man be all one, that he be alone. I'll create a help me for him. Yeah. Speak to our hearts on tonight, God. Speak, God. Your servants are hearing. Your servants are listening. So that was me praying through the review with my eyes closed. <laughs> so God can remind us of what he said on last night. And so tonight, before we flip the script and talk about what happened next, my title, if you need a title for tonight, is titled No More Drama. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it's titled, No More Drama. Thank you, Lord. Where did the drama happen? 
See, we think the drama began because somebody was talking about me or something like that. But the drama began in Genesis chapter 3. We're going to keep right on from last night about the drama. Before I get to the drama, I'm going to show you the drama. We, I won't be long because we have an assignment to do on tonight. So where the drama started, before we get to the drama, let me explain an element, a, a, a terminology that God has given Paula and Denise that you, you, this may be your first time hearing it, but I promise you it won't be your last, and then you'll know how to walk through it. C.S. Lewis wrote a book titled The Screwtape Letters, and in The Screwtape Letters, he's describing the demonic, the way the demonic operates. It's not, the devil don't come with a red suit, pitchfork, all trying to scare you. He comes as an angel of light, and his, his hierarchy is more like a business bureaucracy. And so in the screw tape letters, it's revealing the way that they try and trip us up and keep us from walking in our identity and serving God. So that's, that, that's me describing the book, the screw tape letters. And God told me the screw tape element is for us to understand the way that he coming at us personally. So when Double Portion Kingdom Ministries ministers, we will reveal and expose the tactics and the plans of the enemy. Uh, Paul said, I won't have you ignorant concerning the plans of the enemy. Yeah. So we're exposing the screw tape elements that would try and trip us up. And so you see how this, we said it is an equilateral <coughs> triangle. And I use the nice cute drawn ones, but tonight I'm going to have to try and draw it for myself because I don't like the one that I printed on there to be able to tell the story the way God told me to tell it. So remember, y'all remember which way that triangle went, right? But here is the drama, and here is what happened in Genesis chapter 3. Chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, the adversary came in and flipped our world upside down. So instead of it being, they're equilateral, but have you ever seen a triangle stand up by the tip? Right. Mm. Unless there's some kind of witchcraft involved, it's not standing up. Mm. That's another story that I didn't study out. Mm. But, so, <laughs> but so the moral of the story is we're flipped upside down. And this triangle is not God's design. This triangle has mankind as a victim. Mm. Mankind is a victim. When the adversary came to woman with this crazy idea that you're not like God when everything he created was good and he told them they were good, they were created in his image, they already were like God, but oh, that's another story I don't want to go into right there. So the adversary came in and painted the picture to humankind you're not in the image of God. You're actually a victim. It's twisted. Mm. He flipped the thing upside down. Mm. And his role was rescuer. Mm. Rescue, rescuer. And he painted the picture of God as a prosecutor. Mm. In counseling, there's something called the drama triangle. Mm. There's always a victim. There's a rescuer and there's a prosecutor. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see the, the drama triangle? You see the screw tape element where the enemy has come and turned it all upside down? Mm -hmm. he, and, and TV shows are all made up about this. Somebody's a victim, somebody's being mean to them, and they need to be rescued. Right. I'm being, I'm dead. I'm pausing and just calming, calmly trying to say this the way God wants us to see that our world has been flipped upside down, that our identity has been distorted because this is the triangle that many of us have lived through. Even on last night when we did the demonstration of the, the Pudo that comes and covers your Imago Dei. And, and, and what was the Pudo? One of the things that I forgot to say is that it was shame. Mm. They covered themselves, they tried to cover themselves because of shame. And this right here always has shame at the center of it. This is not our identity.
But how many of us in here find your place in one of these? Guess what? All of us in fallen mankind have been in all three of them. We don't ever want to say that we were the prosecutor, but here's a biblical example of how you can be a rescuer to somebody, but a persecutor, I said prosecutor, it's supposed to be persecutor, y'all, I butchered it. But anyway, it's Paul Denise, I can fix it if I want to. Um, persecutor, not a prosecutor, you're a persecutor. P-E-R-S-E-Q-U-T-O-R, -E -E persecutor. Uh -huh. So we've been in all three roles at one time, all of us. The biblical example that I found about this is Jacob, Jacob and Esau. And remember, Jacob wanted to birthright. And so mama trying to be a rescuer because Jacob supposed to have the birthright. It was prophesied, but it wasn't happening yet. And it looked like he was going to go ahead and give it to Esau. So Rebecca uh, tried to step in and help the situation out. She was a rescuer to Jacob, but she was a persecutor to Esau. So how many of us have tried to help somebody, but in order to help, when you're playing Captain Save Them, I'm just going to put it right there, y'all. We know those of us who are trying to wear the cape as a rescuer, you know what God is saying. So now I will go to my notes on tonight for us to understand what God is saying to us, because we have to let go of this whole triangle that's wrong. We have to flip the script back to the way that God had created us and move away. This is what happened in the garden. This is what it was about, that they were tempted about their identity instead of being created in the image of God. They accepted the identity of victim. Ah, Jesus. So the serpent completely distorted the truth about the relationship between God and creation. And so that's why when we pray, when I, God gave me the, the wisdom, the strategy to pray to the Ancient of Days mm -hmm. to help us get out of the drama triangle, because this drama triangle been going on since Genesis chapter 3. Wow. Not just since your mama knew, but since all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. And it's going to require some ancient wisdom, some of which has not been uncovered yet. But God is wanting it uncovered for such a time as this. Yeah. So when we fellowship, ooh, when, when this happened, the fellowship with the triune God was broken and humankind became captive in the fallen kingdom of drama. This was when it happened. This is a sobering word and we're getting ready for where we're going on tonight. At creation, man and woman, they were side by side before God. When he presented them, they were side by side. There was no, I'm better than you and none, none of that. Right. It happened after this. Yeah. There was respect. It was bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This is my good thing. Mm -hmm. But after this, oh, it's because of you that we in trouble. Right. No, it's because of you that we in trouble. You see the blame game? You see the roles yeah. manifesting there? That fall that happened in Genesis chapter 3, it literally turned everything upside down and it established this drama triangle forever again, rooted and grounded in shame, which shame drives all of these roles. We can see shame real easy in the victim, but can you see shame in the persecutor? They got to be persecuting people to feel important. Or you got to be rescuing people to feel important. Help us, Lord, yeah. that we're going to get rid of all of this. This triangle, we cannot live out of this triangle. Here's something I want us to see. Creation versus the fall. So the way we looked at it last night is based on love. God so loved. But when you look at it this way, it's driven by fear. The way we looked at it last night, it's life giving and life sustaining. He breathed left, he breathed the breath of life. It's life giving and it's life sustaining. But if you look at it this way, it's life sucking and it's life depleting. There, you cannot live as either one of these. This triangle will not stand like that. And so God, whew, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Show me how the latest thing. Wow, that was great. That was great. Now let's go back to the audio with the slides. And so God, whew, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Show me how to lay this thing out so that we can understand what God is saying to us on tonight. 
He wants us to take off the shiny game face. You know the one. Y'all remember the demonstration. Mm -hmm. He wants us to get back down to the nuts. He wants us to get back down to the core, the pearl of great price. And he wants us to no longer operate in any of these. So, uh, because see, can I tell you what the purpose of this drama system is? Kill, steal, and destroy. You cannot get life out of this. And this is rooted and grounded in lies that make us view God the wrong way. I know, it just, I see the wheels turning in people's heads on tonight. And God is wanting to free us so that we no longer operate like this. See, that, that, that savior, that rescuer, the rescuer acts like the savior. They're compelled to be helpful. This, that, that, that rescuer, you need to fix problems. You're enabling, you, you hover. They're caretakers, providers. Now, we're supposed to do that, but what's your motive? The rescuer can be very controlling and manipulative because they think they know what you need to be delivered from him. Mm. Wow. I'll save you. I'll, you trying to be Jehovah somebody. Mm. <laughs> somebody. Let me tell you who the persecutor is. The persecutor acts like the judge. They feel like they always right. Yes. My way. You're doing it wrong. And you can't help them because they just wrong and you stop helping them and pointing fingers at everybody. They need to blame somebody. They're critical. They're accusatory. They're very guarded. They're very defensive. They push others away. They're very controlling and manipulating. Just like them ones, you see, they kind of alike. They're both selfish. And what they like to do is say, it's all your fault. It's your fault for you trying to help them. It's your fault for being, yo, you the reason why you down there. Why don't you just pull yourself up by your bootstraps? Anybody heard any of this before? Yeah. yeah. And so then let's look at the victim because you're not off the hook. The victim feels unworthy. The victim feels powerless to change. The victim believes that he or she has no choice but to be persecuted and I need someone to rescue me. The victim feels trapped, they feel afraid. They believe that they are abandoned and that they're rejected. At the root of a lot of our issues are abandonment and rejection and it comes because we were victimized and we took victim as our identity instead of the fact that we're, it's Pluto, wipe off what, who victimized you as Pluto, and let's go forward. I'm not telling you to get over it. I'm telling you, let's work through it. Because getting over it and acting like it didn't happen is going to still come up and trip you up. Amen. And so lastly, before I yield over to Pastor Don and God do what he needs to do in this place, when this drama triangle is flipped the right way up, we won't be compelled to prove that we're useful, that we're needed, that we're competent, or that we're helpful. We'll be compelled to love with the Christ-type love. That's what will happen. And so what I want us to see is what's the difference between drama rescuing and loving like God? See, the drama, the, the getting out of this drama triangle and being an example and an epistle of the love of God. What's the difference? How does that look? See, if you're in the drama triangle, you're doing what the person you doing what the person is actually capable of doing for themselves. That's how you respond in drama. If you have a grown child that need a job and you're filling out applications, mm. help us. <laughs> but loving like Christ would be that you help that person with the things they can't otherwise do on their own. And just because they don't know how to type, it's time for them to man up or woman up, grow up. Yeah. And if you got to type it like this, yeah. that's just the example that Holy Spirit put in front of me right there. Drama rescuing, you want to save the person from all that pain that they're going through. You won't let the person endure the normal or logical consequences of their actions. I don't want my child to hurt like that. I, I can't sleep if my child is out there in the streets. Did they choose to go out there in the streets or did you put them out there in the street? Whose choice was it? They, you can't fund prodigality. Mm. Meaning the prodigal and you keep and can't. So the, if you're going to love like Christ, you understand that pain is part of the process of growth and you know that there are cons the consequences will be a great teacher. That's good. Yeah. 
In Isaiah, it says, all of your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. So if they're going through some drama and they're looking for peace, their teacher is trying to get their attention. And their teacher, they grown now, you're their intercessor. God is their teacher. Intercede through what they going. Intercede them out of the drama triangle. Intercede them to know their identity. Help, Lord. So I'm just going to do two more on this drama rescuing is agenda driven. You want the person to be different. You want them to act different. You want them to change. Because you know they need to change. But with the love of Christ, you want them to change. You don't have no agenda. Mm. I don't have no agenda. I'm going to offer my services, my help, my advice. And it's okay if you don't want to take it. And then let me add on. If you hit your head about 16 times and come back and say, I should have listened to you. I'm not going to say I told you so. I'm going to give you another set of instructions, which are probably the same ones I gave you the mother 16 times, but I'm not going to give it to you with an attitude like up over here. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you with the love of God. How many of us came back 16 times to him and he said, okay, until we finally got it. Oh, that's wow. <laughs> so God help us see what we need to do. So that's that when I'm up, oh, that's the end of my notes right there. What I want us to see, I'm going to stop right there because Pastor Don has a portion to come up and talk about this. I'm playing a song in between us or are you going? Okay. And so, God, thank you for what our eyes saw. I can't see over here. Can you give victory belongs to Jesus? <laughs> I can't see from this angle. Um, as this song plays, I want you to just get in your heart. I'm not living in this triangle anymore. I don't care. I, I didn't ask anybody to identify where they are. I just was helping you see what these roles look like. Amen, amen. So we're going to minister victory belongs to Jesus. And Pastor Donna is going to do part two for us to understand. No more drama. Amen. No more drama. Yeah. <laughs> victory belongs to Jesus. I know that we've been through some things, but they're clear to you tonight God is saying hallelujah Jesus a little bit more volume on it please God is saying each and every person in this room that there's been a point in time where we've walked in a victim mentality yes we all have been victimized but I stopped by tonight to tell you that we're no longer victims, that we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. The, the psalmist said, victory belongs to Jesus. This is not a season to be a defeated Christian. This is a season to walk in the victory, to walk in the part of your kingdom inheritance that's connected to victory. Amen? Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about nobody else, but I I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be a victim tonight. Oh, hallelujah. So I'll think. Retreat. Genesis. Chapter 1, verses 26. And I'm going to do 26 through 28, but... Pastor Paulette, tonight I'm going to read it out of an amplified version because I like the way the amplified tying it all into where we're going. Amen. So Genesis chapter one, verses 26 through 28. And it reads as so. God said, God said, he spoke it, right? Let us, who's us? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Make mankind in our image. Mm. After our likeness. And let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, tame beasts, and over all the earth. And over everything that creeps up on the earth. Sounds like the mini dominion to me. Sounds like a walking from victory. Amen? Amen. So God created man in his own image. God thought enough about man. Pastor Brooks, that he looked in a mirror and in his, his reflected posture, he created them, both male and female. Amen? Amen? In the likeness of God, 
he created them. Male and female, he created them. But then he went a step farther and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. But watch this, the Amplified says, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. Who that's rich? You mean to tell me he created me in his image. He created me to be like him, to look like him, to walk like him, to worship him. Amen. But then he gave me complete control over everything else that he created. That sound like victory to me. That don't sound like victim mentality. Mm. I'm just saying, right? Amen. So tonight, only for a little while, because we have an assignment, as she said, I'm going to talk to you about a topic that's very prevalent in the body of Christ today. It's called identity theft. Identity theft. The theme of the conference. Hallelujah. Walking in your identity. But I, I stopped by to talk about identity theft. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we come to you this evening first and foremost just to say thank you. God, we thank you for everything that eyes have seen and for that ears have heard so far this weekend. But God, we wouldn't dare bask in your presence without thanking you for the gift of life on this on this evening. God, you allowed us to wake up this morning. You allowed us to come into uh, a prayer and praise and word all day. God, you fed us and you, 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 you fed us until we didn't want no more. Mm -hmm. You fed us natural bread. You fed us bread from heaven. God, we thank you for what you're doing on this weekend. Now, God, I ask that you allow me to get out of the way and that you Speak through me and use me for your glory. Anoint these lips of clay that makes preaching and teaching easy. And God, anoint the people's ears to hear what it is that thus says the Lord. And God, when you're done, may I get out of your way. I pray that everything that comes out of my mouth edifies the body of Christ and brings glory to you, the Father. And the people of God agree by saying amen. amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Identity theft, y'all. Identity theft. It, 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 it's rampant in the body of Christ right now. Amen? And it, and it ought not be, Pastor Marvin, because we are victorious. We're yes. not victims. Yes. You know? Hallelujah, somebody. So I, I call it out right now. God, I call out yes. that victim mentality. If anybody in this room is, it, 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 it is suffering from victim mentality, I say tonight in the name of Jesus that we're going to sever that thing at the roots in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Reverend Javon, we grew up in our time watching something Smith called professional wrestling. You remember we, we like used to watch professional wrestling? But one thing about professional wrestling, it was staged. Mm. Watch this. Before the wrestlers even go out, it had been predetermined who would win the match. Amen? Amen. So the contenders go through the, the battle for entertainment purposes only. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. But the point of the battle is not to decide who will win, mm. but it's to give the crowd a show. Mm. I stopped by to tell somebody tonight, Jesus is putting you on display. Mm. To give them saying people, the ones that say that you would never make it past five years of marriage, the ones that said that you would never graduate, the ones that said that you were too old to go to seminary, the ones that said you would never get married, the ones that said you counted out, you'd never go to college, that you'll never have nothing, that you're going to be just like your daddy, them. I stop by to tell you that he wants to put you on this plane. The one that they gave 22 years, but God said no, and you got parole. He wants to put you on this plane. We mm. talked about it earlier. And who are these people? They're overcomers. They have overcame by what? The blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. Come on, somebody. Like we, we got all kind of testimonies in this room. The room is full of testimonies. Come on. If, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? Mm. Should have been dead sleeping in my grave. What God thought enough of raggedy me to have me 
proclaiming his word. Come on, somebody. Grace and mercy. That's right. New every day. Hallelujah. Wow, that was a great clip. I was so caught into the clip that I didn't realize it was time to transition back to the slides. So here we go back into the slides to finish the rest of this message. New every day. Hallelujah. So the point of the battle is not to decide who will win, but it's to give the crowd a show. Watch this. Marvin, this blessed me. This told me up, oh, man. The winner of the match does not battle for victory, but from victory. Come on. If you don't get nothing else, I say this weekend, people of God, grab this, gravitate on this and grab it. Okay? I'm going to say it again. The winner of the match does not battle for victory, but he battles from victory. Hallelujah. I don't know about anybody else in this room, but that's a good place for me to shout, God, I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you, God, that I, I, yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for the Lord is with me, and his rod and his staff comfort me. Mm. I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah, somebody. I'm battling from victory. I already got the victory. I'm not trying to claim the victory. I, I got it. I got it, I got it. Come on, somebody. You see, he knows, that wrestler, that the victory is already won. So the good news that I've come to proclaim tonight is that through Christ Jesus, each and every one of us, we already have the victory. We already have the battle won. Uh, the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, Pastor Paulette, she tapped into it. God allows us to go through this Christian journey, not to win the victory, but he wants to show us all to the people that have already counted us out. Come on, somebody. Ain't going to be nobody. Ain't going to never go nowhere. Oh, no. mm. Poverty mentality. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's kind of like I heard somebody say early that Jesus had to go through Samaria. Why? Because he had already prayed for her. He had interceded for her. Yeah. Amen. He knew what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Come on. We all got past. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad yeah. that somebody prayed for me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm. John said it like this. He said, dear little children, he told them, he said, the one who is in you is greater than the one that's in the world. What are you saying, John? John says that there's a contrast, hallelujah, somebody, between the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the antichrist. Come on, you got to get this. In short, there's a contrast. God is greater than Satan. That's the message. That's it. That's it. If you get that, that's it. That's it. You have the victory because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah, somebody. So this evening, I'm going to be brief and we're going to talk to you about the subject of identity theft. Mm. Somebody's trying to steal our identity. But I stop by to tell you that God is changing your story. Huh? Hallelujah, somebody. Come on. This is your season for grace, for favor. This is your season to walk into your purpose. Why? Because you just found out oh, on, hmm, hallelujah, fall 222, who you really are. Thank you, God, for my identity. Thank you that I was chosen since before the foundation of the earth. Come on, somebody. The Apostle Paul penned it from a Roman jail cell. My, my favorite verse in the Bible, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called by his purpose. We said it earlier today. He didn't say most things. Did he? He didn't say some things. 
No, he said all things. And, 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 and Pastor Marvin, I did like you. I did a, 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 a word search on the, on the word all, and I researched it in the Greek, and I researched it in the Hebrew, and then, and then I went back to Marion Webster. Yes, sir. And they all said the same thing, all. <laughs> all. all is all. No matter how you put it, all is all. Yes, sir. Come on, somebody. Dr. Google, all. All is all. So I stopped by tonight to tell you that God knows all things about you. Hallelujah, somebody. Jeremiah said it best. He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm. But you were born, before you were born, sanctified you and he ordained you mm -hmm. as a prophet to the nation. I'm speaking to somebody in this room. Yes. That's good news because mm -hmm. it's about this love relationship. So if God knew me when I was in the womb, that means I knew him when I was in the womb. Mm -hmm. So see, me and God, we've been having this thing going on for a long time. Hey. So You know? See, hey. I, I, I knew God before I knew my mama. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah, somebody. But watch this, and I'm going to wind this up, Pastor Paulette, I know. Mm. The same scripture said that we were created in their image. The Father, the Creator, right? Who spoke things into existence. There was nothing, and He turned it into something. Amen? So if I was created in His image, and if He could speak things to existence, that means that. I got the power to speak things into existence as well. Come on, man of God. Amen. Yes. Identity 2020 Lord, participants. Lord, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. Be careful when you go back home now Amen. because you are about to run into some situations because yes. the enemy know that you came and you got refueled. Yes. You went on retreat. Yes. You, you, you chilled out with God. Yes. So, oh yeah, he been chilling out with God. Oh. Now it's Monday morning and I'm about to get it. Be careful what comes out of your mouth after being in a meeting like this because you're going to be tempted. Okay? That's why you got to eat so much word in you till when you're in them situations. You, you know, listen, it just takes a second to have that thought. But you got to process that thing. Don't do it, it's a trick of the enemy. Have you tried my servant, Job? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Although they slay me, yes. yet will I trust him. Come on, somebody. Yes. So the father, right? The creator. So that means we're, we're created beings. But then the son. Mm, we're created in the image of the son. We were created in the image of Jesus, yes. And what was the son about? Love and humility. Then people on your job know you go down there to that church. Yet, on Thursday morning, you're the nastiest thing in the office. Come on, somebody. They are watching you. So, they're saying, well, I'm in the world. But the people in the world, I know they ratchet. So, why should I go up in a church when they closet ratchet? Smile in your face. But they trying to stab you in the back. Come on, somebody. We supposed to be in the business of pulling daggers out of people. Not putting daggers in the people. Come on. Come on, somebody. Represent him. Christians. Christ-like. But then we were created in the image of the Holy Spirit. And, I, and, and, and says to Christina, I like this one. Because this one is gone and it's missing in the church. Holiness. The Bible says be holy because I am holy. And if we created in his image and if he was holy, come on people of God. Look. Choose ye this day which one you serve. A double minded man is what? Unstable. Come on. We can't straddle this fence no more. Look, it's a war on. For God, I live, and for God, I die. Mm. One of the best things about Progressive Baptist Church, Eric personally used to sing a song. 
And he sung this song. He said, if it costs me my life, I'm going all the way. I didn't come too far to stop. I can't stop, won't stop. I'm going all the way with him. Come on, somebody. So we talked about that and we talked about you can't be a victim because he knows your heart and he wants you to have hope. And he knows what you're afraid of right now. That thing that's been keeping you up at night. Mm. But he loves you with an everlasting love. And it's, it's, not, it's unconditional. People love you with conditional love. Yeah. If, if, if you love me, I love you. If you buy this for me, I love you. If, if you do this for me. But he loved you when you didn't even love yourself. Come on, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He loves me. He loves me. Mm. But he got plans for you. Jeremiah talked about the thoughts and plans he has for you. So in conclusion tonight, on this April 2nd, 2020, hallelujah, somebody. Oh. I want you to declare right now, all over the house, I want you to repeat after me. I'm going to be victorious and not victimized. Hallelujah, somebody. I want you to know when I stop by to tell you that the greatest thing that I can tell you tonight, that God is just one heartbeat away. He's in this room right now. He's in this room right now and he wants to take you from victim to victor. Yes, on this night, yes, this night here, remember I declared on Friday night that we weren't leaving here with that stuff. Yes. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So when you walked in the door, Minister Ezekiel gave you a card. Can everybody just pull out your cards and pull out your pens? You even got your own pen. Pastor Paulette got you your own pen. Your own pencil. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, you can turn up a little bit. You can turn up a little bit. Whatever you yeah. It's in the room. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. No, you can Okay, so. Mm hmm. So everybody take out your card and take out your pencil. We got to exercise. This is, this is going to be a faith move tonight. We're going to be a faith. We're going to walk this thing out. This is, you know, we're going to talk about it and then we're going to put it into action. We're going to actually see our faith in action tonight. Hallelujah, somebody. So take that card and I want you to write on it whatever things that have been attempting to steal your identity. Remember we talked about that last night? We talked to you. We're going to search your heart. Whatever has been attempting to steal your identity. Whether it's pride. Whether it's a judgmental attitude. Whether it's brokenness. Trauma. Divorce. Past failures. Past offenses. Rejection. Hurt. Mm, I hear you, God. Somebody in here is suffering from church hurt. Ooh, I, that's a whole other sermon. I wish I could do that. One. Hallelujah, somebody. Rejection. Abandonment. Whatever it is. Unforgiveness. Ooh, that's a big one. Unforgiveness. You can't go to the next realm in God with unforgiveness on your heart. I, I want to see everybody in this room writing. I see some hands not moving. If you're not writing, then write the word pride down because you too prideful to write something down. Because everybody in here is struggling with something. Mine is written already. Hallelujah, somebody. After we write them down, we're going to bring them to the altar. We're going to pray over those things. And then we're going out to the fire. And we're going to put them in the fire. We're going to burn them up to be forgotten and to never be remembered no more. Hallelujah. Tonight, whatever it is on that card, don't give it to God and take it back up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay? So, 
We learned a couple things so far this weekend. We learned what? We learned that we were created in his image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no one can take that away from you. Yeah. Nobody can take that away from you. Because in his image, he created who? You. Mm -hmm. Both what? Male, Male and female. female. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we are God. And when I say son, I mean male and female. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we know who we are, but we also know that because of he that's in us, that we're not victims, mm -hmm. that we have the victory. So that thing, this thing right here, okay, we're overcomers. Why? Because he overcame the world on the cross at Calvary. Amen. Amen. So tonight we not only celebrate our victory, but we celebrate his victory. We celebrate the cross at Calvary. So this is our Good Friday celebration. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Amen. somebody. Amen. Somebody, Amen. you know, come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember we came here once and uh, we watched the Passion of Christ. Mm -hmm. we, we were here on Good Friday. Mm -hmm. And I can still hear Sister Reuben weeping. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Jesus. So he took all those yes, lives yes. for you and for me mm -hmm. so that we don't got to deal with this stuff right here. Yeah, 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 okay? Yeah, yeah. We don't got to deal with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So tonight we're going to decree and declare in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. that we have the victory through Christ and that we're overcomers, mm -hmm. that we've overcome the world because he overcame the world. Mm -hmm. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. And finally, and we know Repeat after me. And we know, and we know, know that all things, that all things work, together work together for my good. For my good. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Burn them up in the fire. Ooh, fire. 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 That's what I'm talking about. Fire. Yes. Glory. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, God.